All right, so David, coaching question that is very basic, but I have never executed one. So this is where um, this is where we need everybody to um, have their thinking cap on because we're going to talk about short selling, uh, and we're going to cover both sides of moving in your favor versus moving against you. Um, just for David and everybody tonight, I, I built some fancy PowerPoints tonight. Uh, I would strongly, strongly recommend that once this video is done tonight and we post it up into the members area, um, again, not necessarily tonight, but whenever you get a chance, and maybe we'll even pull it out, the section that I'm about to cover on the next slide, which discusses short selling and getting out of the short sell as it moves in your favor and both against you. So I, first I want to make this um, uh, uh, admission, for lack of a better way of putting it. When I first learned about short selling, it was literally when I first started trading because the market started going down quickly. It was after the dot-com boom, so I understood short selling quickly. But I want to tell you this because I'm, you know, I'm just a regular person like everybody else here. I had a hard time understanding it. Like It was very hard to be like, I don't understand like getting out on the offer, getting out on the bid, and if it moves higher, how you get out. So I'm going to try and simplify that for you tonight. So, but the point that I want to get across is if short selling and exiting short selling is confusing to you, that's normal. So please be nice to yourself. <laughs> it's not easy to understand the first couple of times. However, once you do understand it and you understand like um, uh, was, was uh, brought up here, which is the mechanics of it, um, it you'll, you'll get it. So I, I'm just imploring you. The next slide I think is going to help it quite a bit. Uh, but there is certain stuff that we need to discuss first. So first off, here are the buttons uh, on what is my E-Trade platform, but they're all the same. So you buy a sell, you stock it. You, you, buy, you buy a stock and you sell it to get out of it. When you short sell a stock where you're anticipating the stock going down, to get out of it, you cover it. So even though sell and short, you're doing the same thing, you're actually doing a different type of trade, a sale is getting out of an order you bought. A short sale is entering a new trade and you get out of that by buying it back and covering it. So I'm gonna cover this in a lot of detail now. So David brought up a good point. I understand the concept in general, but confused on the stop losses and the use of cover trades I see in the platform. So these are the actual buttons that you would be considering to use. Uh, but now we need to discuss some very important terminology now. Uh, I know Raghu had mentioned before about adding the lingos. Um, so this section that I'm about to cover is in the order flow masterclass. So I just want to make that clear. And it's a very important section on uh, direct access trading, direct access trading. Okay. So bid is where you advertise to buy. So remember, everything I'm about to talk about right now is in the context of understanding exiting and trading short sales. Okay. Exiting and trading short, short sales. Uh, okay, yeah, Parker and Chris um, saying that TD is a seller or buy. I've actually seen that before. They automatically do it on their side where they, they mark it as a short sale versus a sale. Um, that's actually common. Um, E-Trade might be one of the last few that does it that way, but I thought it was kind of helpful to everybody. I wanted to walk step by step through buy, sell, short cover. So thank you for that, though, by the way. So bid is your advertising to buy, and advertising is very, very specifically used there. An offer, which is sometimes known as the ask price, so you'll hear it as the bid offer or the bid ask, is where you're advertising to sell. Now, here's the next couple of things, next couple of bullet points are probably where you're gonna wanna take a screenshot, okay? So let's say the bid is 49.05, so those are people advertising to buy on the bid, and the offer is 49.10, and those are people advertising to sell. So the bid offer is 49.05 by 49.10. That's the language you would use as a trader. This is also known as the level one quote, which is generally the aggregate of all of the people advertising to buy at 49.05, and all of the people advertising to sell at 49.10. And just to throw a little bit something else in there, is the difference between 05 and 10 is known as the spread. So this stock, this fictitious stock, has a five cent spread. Generally speaking, not a hard and fast rule, but generally speaking, stocks that trade less 
liquid, so less average shares per day, have a wider spread to protect the market makers and specialists. Because if the spread was um, too close and the stock didn't trade, they would actually be on the wrong side of a lot of trades. So just as a side note there. What's important is I want you to sound smart at the barbecue is you know that your stock has a five cent spread or a 10 cent spread, that kind of thing. So why is that important? And I'll tell you why. So let's just say for argument's sake, and I believe this happened to Matt uh, about two weeks ago, we discussed this in a stock that wasn't that liquid. So let's say you bought the stock at 49.05. Let's say you advertised on the bid with a limit order, make very important about that, limit order 49.05, and now the stock starts going up. Now you can advertise at, let's say it's now at 49.25. You now advertise to sell up here at 49.25, and as long as it goes up there and somebody's willing to buy it from you, you advertise to sell, they buy it from you, and you made the difference between 05 and 25. So I know Jeff, um, uh, Jeff was, who was it? I'm sorry, Fred. Fred was scalping uh, Tesla today, but he was doing it for much wider uh, trade. So those are both limit orders. But here's the opposite side of that trade, which we're going to talk about right now. You could buy on the bid or buy at the offer. So let's just say for argument's sake, you're looking at the stock and it's 49.05 and you're like, oh my gosh, inside five minute candle, Pete just called it out. This must be the greatest trade since sliced bread. I have to buy the stock right now. And you try and buy the stock and you advertise at 49.05, which is exactly the high of the inside candlestick. But now the candle goes up a little bit. And now, it's, now the bid is 49.06, 07, 08, 09, 10. So now it's 49.10. So what was the five cent offer? Now it's 49.10 by 49.15. And you're like, oh, I got to get in this trade. Somebody just said something really important. I have to get in this trade. I keep advertising and I'm not getting filled. Well, now you have a choice to buy it actively from somebody else who's selling. That's buying at the offer. Now, you could buy at the offer with a limit price, and I have a video on this in the tape reading section as well, so I'm covering it again, though, because it's important, especially for what we're going to talk about next on um, short selling. You could buy a limit order. Instead of trying to buy here and it's going up, you could place an order for a limit order to buy at 49.10, and you'll get 49.10 or better. Now, I hardly ever, ever, ever use market orders, unless it's a stop order and that kind of thing, but I'm not, I'm not talking about stop orders right now. So does everybody understand you could buy in the bid by advertising. If the stock starts to go up and you don't think your bid is going to get filled because it's going up, you could then buy actively at the offer and take these shares. Now, how fast these shares move and how many shares are available, which is liquidity. Remember, 2 million shares per day. That's, that's one of the reasons. Pretty much I can get in or out where I want to. That's one of the reasons I have that liquidity now. Now we're going to look at the other side. You can sell on the offer, meaning you're going to advertise here, right? We said advertise to sell or sell at the bid to those who are actively selling excuse me, actively advertising to buy. So let's do this in a little bit of reverse, right? So let's say you bought it 49.05, and I'm sure this has happened, right? It goes all the way up to 49.25, and now you advertise on the offer at 49.25, and all of a sudden it starts going down. You're starting to see a red candle. Like, oh my God, I gotta get out of this thing. I gotta, it's going down. Now you're advertising at 49.20, 49.18, 49.17, and, and it's just falling like a rock on you. And you're, you think, okay, I, I'm not going to be able to advertise. Nobody's going to give me my price. And it's going down in the other direction. So what do you do? You actively sell those shares to people who are advertising to buy. And what's the language for that? It means you're hitting the bid. It's a very famous terminology. You're hitting the bid to get out of that trade. So you're actively selling shares when it starts to go down to get out of a trade. Now, Generally speaking, and again, I'm going to keep this high level just for this conversation. If this is all the way up here, let's say it's at 49.25 still, and you have now moved up your trailing stop to break even at 49.05. If this starts coming down and your stop loss gets filled, that's going to hit the bid at either a market order or a limit order to actively sell those shares. When this limit price gets filled, it places an order to sell to the bid. So we needed to cover that right there. And yep, Gary, it's, the offer is also known as the ask. 
So we needed to cover that to be very clear. So I would strongly recommend you take a snapshot of this. If not, I'm gonna give everybody the slides later anyway. So here's why. Now we're gonna get into the short selling aspect of it. So let's just say for argument's sake, and David Zerby brought up the question, let's say he wants to sell short a stock that's $50 right now. Let's say in his mind, he thinks the stock is going down for whatever reason. Let's say it's well offered on the monthly, well offered on the weekly, well offered on the daily, hourly candles negative, and we're below the opening price. Primo situation and there's room to go. If that stock goes down, he makes money. That's why this is green. So green is good if you're short selling. You want it going down, 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 down is profitable for a short sale. Same as buying a put option. You're seeing it go down. So if the short sale is at 50 and it goes all the way down to 49, there's a dollar difference between those two. So if he sold the stock short at 50 and gets out of the trade at 49, and we're going to use the language in a second, there's a dollar in between the from where he shorted it and where he covered it so he makes that dollar so as price moves lower you can place a limit order on the bid to cover for a profit so remember before we said sell short is entering the trade covering means you're buying it back so remember what i just said about limit orders and advertising on the bid so while this is going down it's a profitable green arrow right but the candlesticks will be red right so you got red going down red going down red going down as it's going down david can place a limit order at 49 dollars. so while it's going down people are hitting the bid remember on the previous slide hitting the bid right actively hitting the bid as it's going down because they're panicking it's going down right so he's going to advertise at 49 waiting for somebody to come and hit that bid and sell it to him so he can cover that short sale. But now the part I'm gonna discuss is the piece that I was confused about when I first started learning it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best to give a solid uh, walkthrough so you can watch it a couple of times. Now that's the best case scenario, right? You short it here, it goes down, you place a limit order on the bid and somebody sells it to you so you can get out of the trade. But what happens if prices start to move higher? So let's say he placed the limit order at 49, now it's 49.10, 49.20, 49.30. He can't get out of this anymore because if he advertises, he's chasing price up, and we've all seen that. What does that look like on, uh, on the charts? It's probably now well bid, right? It probably went well offered, well offered, well offered. Bam, now all of a sudden the stock is well bid, and now David's chasing the price higher, right? You can place a limit order, or a market order at the offer to cover for a profit up to 50. So as this stock is going high right now, we just said it's 49, 10, 20, 30, 40. So as long as it's between 49 and 50, he could now buy it back at the ask actively anywhere between here and here to cover this for a profit. As long as it's below 50 and 49, he'll make money. So I want to go back here again because it's important. So if you can imagine this, it went down. He tried advertising here, and all of a sudden, the five-minute candle went well bid. So he's trying to advertise it on the way up, and he's not going to get filled because they're buying it here actively. So now it's going 49.10, 49.20, 49.30, and he's chasing it up here. He's never going to get filled because there's active buying, and it's going higher, right? So now let's say this is 49.40, just for argument's sake. So let's say it's 49.35 by 49.40. He's like, screw this, I'm out of here. I wanna book the 65 cent profit on the short sale. He'll now actively get out on this side by buying shares that somebody else is offering to exit his short sale. And again, I just, I can't emphasize this enough. This is one of the most challenging, confusing things that we will ever do together. If you trust me on this, this is, once you need a little bit of repetition, but once you do, and trust me, I'm not bringing this up haphazardly, the market is in a different tone right now, and I think everybody knows that, right? So as long as he's chasing it up, he's probably not going to get filled on his limit order. He could try, he could certainly try, but let's say it's going up, up to 50, place a limit order or a market order. Now, again, I very rarely use market orders because I'm trading liquid stocks. Uh, I usually lose limit orders and I'd be able to get out. Now, Here's what he doesn't want to have happen. Here's the opposite now. 
if he shorts a stock and it starts to go up, we all know that's unlimited risk, right? Because that can go to infinity, right? So what happens now? It goes all the way up between 50 and 51. Now it's becoming a losing trade from here and as it keeps going higher. So as prices replace a limit order or a market order at the offer to cover this position for a loss. So yep, so it could be a short squeeze. It could just be, look, think about what we had this afternoon, right? The spy was breaking down again later in the afternoon. Let's take a quick look at the chart, right? Um, if we take a look at, um, I'll just pull it up really quickly because this is probably the best example uh, looking at the shorter time frame uh, right here. Right? You might have been like, okay, this is bouncing and I'm going to put on a short sale here because we have resistance here and had a hard time getting through there. Or maybe you can even do it here because now it's well offered. You know, let's zoom this out a little bit. Like, okay, uh, okay, rally, you're done. You're still below the opening price. I'm going to short it here. So this is the situation that we just talked about here where it's 50 and it doesn't roll over. It starts to head back up. And that's where now he's chasing price higher. He's not going to be able to advertise because it's running away from him and he's got to actively get out of that position. So I just can't emphasize this enough. Short selling takes a couple of brain cells and uninterrupted brain cells to really, really understand this. And I'm telling you, it is so worth your time. You have no idea. And I forgot who asked it last week, but it was a brilliant question. Um, and it was in reference to should we be making uh, list of stocks to trade on both sides of the market and heck yeah that's normal trading <laughs> where you have a watch list of longs a watch list of shorts and you have them sorted by change from the opening depending on whether it's a long or a short heck yeah so each and every day we're most likely going to have trades on the long side and the short side um, you'll be picking the stocks that are in sync with the market for the easier trades but if the market rolls over and or it does the opposite like it did today uh, if you had a bunch of short sales coming into today, and the end of the day, the market rallies, we were talking about trading a lot of those other stocks long this afternoon. I think eBay uh, exploded uh, later in the day um, as well in sync with the market. So this is a good example of what we're talking about here. So I, I look, I, I, just, I just can't emphasize this enough. You need to watch this. Um, Karen Simmons actually reached out to me today. She was walking me through how she was thinking about short selling and I congratulate her. She's getting out of her comfort zone now. She's, she's realizing the market conditions are changing. Um, so very, very important. Very important to learn this. This is, this is real market scenario. Now, I want to say this, and I, and I say this in all sincerity. If you're not comfortable short selling, is, that's one thing. And you don't have to if you don't want to. If, if it's just like one of those things where you're like, I'm just never going to get it, that's fine. That's okay. Um, I'd recommend you learn it. I'd recommend you give it a shot to learn. I'll just throw that out there. Um, but I also know a lot of people that don't like to short sell because they think it's un-American. Um, why would I want to set bet against American companies, that kind of thing? I understand that too. I don't have that problem. If a stock's going down, I'm hitting the bid <laughs> and I'm getting short if I can make money. Uh, but just so everybody's clear, and this is kind of like an advanced conversation, um, most of the people you meet, probably 95% of the active traders you'll meet, 95% probably are long only and just looking for spots to buy. And I absolutely know that in our community, just from conversations and seeing how people are trading. There's nothing wrong with it, but you need to be super disciplined not to fight a bearish environment. You're much better off being in cash and waiting at the least for well-bid candlesticks if, if the majority of stocks are going down like we've had for the last week and a half, um, or waiting for some minimum criteria like we said pre-market going into today. Wait, wait, wait. Don't buy until at least we see well-bid candlesticks. Luckily, we got Roku today that, that was a really nice payday for a lot of people right out of the gate. So David, good question. I'm sure a lot of people had the same question 